And welcome back. This is Kotal for another video. I had a good week. It is Friday. So we've got a C United European Community event. This is server one. Uh, they had to split again. Um, current server pop is 151. 77 on the attacking CSA and 74 on the defending in team. Let's take a look at that team. Looks like we've got Sergeant Leo here from the Serpents. SB here. Uh, they are Serpents Brigade. We'll see. He's got his arty crews going, trying to get some uh, cannons into position here. Look, the uh, left yeah, side of the yeah. Union field. If thou most chooses to show your rear to me, then I shall flank you from the behind. Indeed. And for the Union team, we have the 6th New York. We have the 4th Georgia. We have the 52nd New York and the 51st New York. Leading them, we have Corporal Pilot, 2nd Lieutenant Gray, Lieutenant O'Keefe, and Major Venom. They're live at 40, but have a little bit of time here. So we've got LFL with Adjutant Forbin here with his already crew. In addition, we have 6 Texas under Captain Russo. We've got GC under Colonel Vibra. You've got the LFL under Lieutenant Ark, and we have 8th Florida under Major Hog. Those are the two teams we are off and going. And you can see we have the CSA spawn in there already over here. Union spawn is back behind those trees over there. Actually, right behind over by these wagons. You can see the already position is actually over there, but the SB has moved their gun to this side of the field, and this is the point of contention. See how the unit sets up their defense. This is a little bit like it was back in the day uh, with uh, 150 man servers. Uh, so, about that size. So, we will see how these two teams play with that. There's been a few rule changes. Um, just slight updates to the UEC rulebook. So, biggest thing I saw was the uh, now the uh, your need to be at 10, uh, to be in double ranks is now at 10 men or more and not 15. So, uh, there's a couple units here that this will affect. We will see how well they adapt to it. But looks like so far, the CSA is spreading out. One do unit doing a wind flank maneuver. Two are on this left side of the road, and one on the right. Union is massing back for the most part. They do have one unit that's kind of forward here. And one unit protecting already. So 50 seconds. Oh, sorry, is this 52nd? No, this is the SB. No, oh, it is the 52nd. You would throw me off. Laser. And SB is actually back here protecting that gun. You see the SA, SA, uh, CSA moving up here. Looks like they might be moving to flank the 52nd here. In fact, I would say O'Keefe needs to get his men out of here very soon after this very good forward movement here by Hogg in East Florida. And they indeed are going to have to fall back. And we can see there's another engagement over here as the NYV is engaging in a long-distance battle here with the Six Texas. The Battle of the Sixes here. The Sace versus... I don't know how you say Six in uh, in, in uh, whatever language uh, Parker speaks, although Parker's not here right now, so... Oh, we got another forward movement here by V-Bar. A very aggressive move here by the GC. Trying to catch the 6 New York as they retreat. But uh, they are taking some fire here on the side. In fact, I would say they need to get out of here pretty soon. But they're going to take a good amount of fire. Yep, and Colonel Vibar has given the order to fall back. Some good shooting there from Fort Georgia. And Mr. Gray commanding them. Again, right now, we have basically an L formation developing here for the Union anchored along the point, and you have kind of one float force out here in the form of 6 New York. The CSA is kind of mirroring it. They have a base fire in the center and then one flank guard over here on their left. Very low ticket so far. 
Move le quick en avant marche And LFL, Lieutenant Ark is going to move his men up. Allez les gars, on casse le rechargement, on y va. Let's see if a better shot here. He is facing the anchor of the Union, the SB here. Alt ici, messieurs, point salve. Alt ici. En joue. Vise les genoux. 3, 2, 1, feu. Allez, resserrer sur la gauche. Recharger. Resserrer sur la gauche. Allez, on se pack, on se pack. You see that cannon getting loaded here. Let's see what it can do. What can Sergeant Leo and that cannon do? He's got a great shot lined up right now. If he can get it off in time. Oh, we have a charge developing here. Here comes the Florida. Not a charge, but a forward movement here. Firing into the 4th Georgia. Og is getting very aggressive here. He's going to attract a lot of fire being this far forward. We can try it if you want. We can flag Right dress, And A Florida is going to have to pull back after that. But LFL is going to change positions with him on the other side. So we're at 34 minutes. So far, we're not really seeing too many casualties yet for either side. Take aim, boys. Good volley, boys. What up? Couple good shots here from the NYV, led right now by Pilot. Now the NYV is part of the uh, the Six New York specifically, because there's another oh, they kill no one. part of the NYV. That's the 88th New York. Now the Six New York is a cavalry unit. Now they train in both uh, cavalry and infantry tactics. Uh, pretty robust unit. They play a lot of uh, events, we, both we, NA we, and uh, EU, we, we, we. Um, and they are a major oh, part yeah, of the HRE event. In fact, well, Russo looks like he's going to come up here and might hit Pilot in the side. Let's keep it an eye over there, see if anything changes. Now, some people ask me why I'm moving the camera around so much. I'm trying to be more stable with it, but the ultimate goal is to show what is going on with the battle and not necessarily catch as much cinematically. Although, I do try to catch cinematic when I can, but the ultimate objective is to show what is going on in the battlefield. So sometimes, you know, I might have a good angle on a charge, but if I think there might be something else going on, I might check and see if there's something more relevant to the battle going on. So that is why I change up. But, uh, yeah, the NYV, um, they are a CAV unit. Um, they are partnered up with the 88th New York as part of the NYV. Lots of events that they play in. Um, in fact, Jesus. Um, they do Friday NAEU, they do Saturday NAEU, and they do Sunday EU. And they also do other drills and stuff during the week. So a very active, very robust unit that loves doing their cab tactics. And also believes very much in uh, letting junior leaders get a chance to lead, as you can see out there with Corporal Pilot. So you see a lot of rotation of uh, junior leaders in there. So. Looks like the Fort George is getting thinned out a lot here. Oh no, they just changed up. So they just switched over here, that's why. It was a little bit different. You can see them now engaging with the six Texas. Now the 6th Texas out here is a, is a relatively new unit. Uh, I've seen them mostly in the UEC, both for Saturdays and Fridays. Um, they are a Spanish-speaking unit, as you can see with the ESP. They are Espanol. Um, they are a pretty aggressive units in AA. So, you know, if you're a primary Spanish speaker or you speak Spanish and you want to get to a unit with them, that's a pretty aggressive, pretty robust unit that plays on the EU time. Um, I'd say check out the 6th uh, Texas. Um, 
Now, I might not have mentioned it, but this game is War of Rights. It is available on Steam right now for 30 US dollars. Um, these are private events. Just be cognizant if you go into public. Some of them are not as um, managed as this one, so there's a lot of uh, racist nut jobs in there. So just be aware of that. But in private events, we don't have to worry about that. And this is a private event called the UEC, United European Community, that is. Uh, Managed, and in fact, they have yeah. Mr. Walsh and Mr. Z Zebra is out here actually uh, admining and watching this guy. So, if they see anything wrong, either toxic behavior or rule breaking, they will deal with it. So, that is how they keep the event clean. That ready? Leo, what order do you want? Let's watch this already shot. Uh, a little bit too far on the fuse, unfortunately. They got a couple, but not as many as they wanted. Uh, but yeah, so the UEC, United European Community event, it is a very uh, structured event. Um, as you can see, they got rules about how you can operate in your units. They want to try to create a very uh, line battle and kind of very iconic type of gameplay. Um, so if that is interest of you, they play every Friday and Saturday at 8 p.m. GMT. Link in the description to the Discord where they organize. And I mentioned some of the other units earlier. There is a link to all these units in the Discord, in the Discord, in the description to their Discord. So that is how you sign up uh, for them. Actually, I think 50 Curse goes to a Steam community page, but I got a link to that too. LFL is maneuvering around. I kind of like this. Maybe trying to expand the battlefield a little bit here. Try to get a better angle, because I think uh, that combined fire from the SB and 52nd was a lot. Nice volley here from the LFL. As you can see, the LFL is uh, French. Lee's French region. Legion. Very energetic bunch. Very robust. Very big. So, if you're a French... Uh, Speaker, looking for a unit for war rights. Uh, LFL may be it for you if you're looking for a big, robust unit. They play... Uh, they play UEC today. They do HRE on Sundays. I believe they have a Saturday event. I'm not sure if it's Grand Campaign or UEC. I can't remember. I do apologize, guys. Now what I do like about this maneuvering, he is taking a lot of fire, but he is trying to juke the cannon right now, but the problem is the anchor of the Union right there, the SB, is really adjusting their fire, being very selective, and is being very disciplined in their fire, and that was, who was this, was that 52nd? Yeah, that was 52nd getting in a little bit of lick as well. I would say right now the key for the Union is to concentrate their fire as best they can and really a trick down these units one at a time. We can see they're about even on tickets, uh, but 28 minutes is not a bad place for the Union to be right now, and really the CSA doesn't have any space on the field. And of course, if you do like these videos, uh, always appreciate any support, like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. It's so difficult to aim at the PPs because they're so small. The cannon, the cannon, the cannon on the right. Oh, yes, yes. I'm so big and small that can't help you. I'm loading it. 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 The LFL has rotated back here. Ah, this is interesting. So the LFL has moved their cannon up here as well into the center of the field. We will see how that develops. Let me check back on the action on this left side by the uh, the 2-6. 66. It's like a pretty uh, static battle right now. You can see we got the, uh, I'll call it the sideshow over here, the 66. And then you got the main fight here in the center. Sorry, LFL tried to rotate out a little bit, but that didn't really work out too well. The SB and 52nd were able to rotate on them. Uh, really, the SB and the uh, 52nd are bearing the brunt of it right now. You've got 4th Georgia a little bit further back, kind of as a reserve element right now. And another rotation out. I bet this is LFL again. 
No, it's Hog in East Florida. He's going to try his luck at this flanking maneuver. Let's uh, we'll see how this works for the 8th Florida. And Hog is going to attempt to charge. Oh, no, he's not. He's going to come up and shoot. Um, I'm not sure about that target selection. They decided to target the 52nd and not the SB, and I think the SB is the bigger danger. And they may regret that, especially if LFL does not push up and support this attack. And, yep, you did, you, you did, 52nd is a danger, um, but SB is, is a far bigger danger. I, I hate this. Nothing against 52nd. They are a great unit. And now here comes a charge from the LFL, and they are able to wash over the 52nd without too much difficulty. But now they're going to come up against the SB. Both teams now hit engaged at the 25-minute mark. The LFL is doing a decent job with this charge. I think Fort Georgia needs to commit itself to the reserves to help. If they don't, LFL may seize this position here. And Fort Georgia does not go in. LFL is able to take out the arty. A critical mistake here by the Union, in my opinion, here. I believe if Fort Georgia was committed to that, they might have been able to hold off LFL, but instead, they have been knocked off. They have lost a flag. And that is going to hurt the, the Union quite a bit. But maybe they thought it was better to maintain this position back here. I, we are, we fucking are. I don't don't agree. I, don't, I think that was I think that was a big mistake. We might have been. We might not have seen the uh, the problem here again. There's no steam chat, so you kind of just have to be aware. But um, he might have been trying to deal with this unit in front of him. That's just spawn, Liam. But um, you know, he did have GC fighting him face to face, so he might have been distracted by Colonel Vibar. But uh, you can't you can't allow yourself to be shaped like that. Let's see what the CSA does now. Are they going to try to cap, or are they going to try to do a more forward position here? NYV is still tied down by the 6 Texas. Now here comes Hog, who started off the attack. a little bit too long on that fuse time. You can see if it goes past them, it doesn't explode there. It's too long of the fuse. But there is a limit to how short you can do the fuse, so they might, if they've already maxed it out, you know, you've already maxed it out. And the CSA has opted to cap, and the Union is moving to counter. Here comes the SB moving up, trying to get on the flank here. Forming up a very disciplined line here. This double rank getting ready to uh, move on up. Semeki, hold up. Semeki, whoa. 52nd on the right, providing some covering fire. Right it's going to really come down to the SB, whether or not they can win this initial fight, I think. Now, there is 11 minutes on this counterattack. I don't think they got the best of it with 8th floor. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know about this charge. This... this all the 8th Florida did was impale themselves on the anchor of the Union. And they are now wiped out, and their flag is now down. In the meantime, 52nd, though, has been sacrificed in order to give them that opportunity here. And LFL is charging in to try to not give the Union a respite. We saw this once before, and once more, the LFL is attacking. Elan, you might say. And once more, a very successful charge by the LFL. And once more, you know, I, I've been criticizing Fort Georgia here, but 
you know, the, the GC is doing a great job of tying them down. And 6 Texas is tying down the NYV here. And so far, the, the matchup of 8th Florida and um, LFL is beating the matchup of 51st and 52nd every time. And there is no answer for the Union. They're going to have to refigure out a calculus here. They cannot continue to fight this battle as they're doing it. Because right now, the, with these unit matches up, matchups, it is a disaster for the Union. You can see the CSA getting a good amount ahead on tickets. Now, there is a counterattack. So if the CSA, if the Union can retake it, they will be in a good position. But, um, ooh, another art shot coming in. Kind of harassing the Fort Georgia there, knocking them down, kind of keeping them suppressed. Come on, camera. Let's go. So we'll see what the Union decides to do next, but I don't think they can continue doing what they're doing. Now, Fort George is another unit. I don't know as much about Fort George. I, I know Owens, uh, one of the Captain Owens, pretty well. He's a pretty smart guy, uh, pretty pretty knowledgeable. Um, I know they do this event for UEC, and I believe they do um, the Grand Campaign. I'm not sure of their European-only event. I'm trying to think. I have, don't recall other events that they're in, but... Um, They are a pretty, uh, not not huge organization, but uh, fairly good sized. Primary English speaking. Here comes the SB again. We're at eight minutes on this counterattack. Uh, we're going to charge in at uh, seven, seven minutes. Okay, so the Union is going to try to counterattack at seven minutes. Now, my criticism right now for the Union is if your intent is to charge, there is no point in getting into a shootout right now. All you're doing, at best, I would have a small unit maybe rotate the NYV up to kind of draw fire. But I would really want to preserve my big heavy hitter like the SB. I would not want to waste time in a firefight and lose all this combat power, you know, in a, in a firefight right now. I think that's a huge mistake. And I think it might make this charge a lot more difficult. And if they're gonna charge at seven, I don't you know, we got so we got basically three lines of attack here. We got fifty second on the right side. Fort Georgia on this side and SB on the other side. But they're not all lined up together either. Wait, no, we're not calling yet. Steady. We're going to charge, all right? We're going to charge down the road. We're going to charge. Wait for the other guys to charge. Hold on, forward. Mark, no one less than fuck you. Charge, charge. You do not want to wait for the other guys in charge, and you all want to charge in together. Build a peak ensuite. Build a peak. And again, we see the problem is they were not all lined up. And these charges will not go all go in together. SB is wiped out. Here comes 52nd. NYV is joining this charge here. And there goes Fort Georgia. But again, these charges did not go off together. GC is here. And look who's going to flood into this flank here and shoot you in the side. Now, if SB was dealing with it at the same time, you're, you would have a much better chance for success. But because you, the way you set up and the delay that you created, this attack is completely collapsing. Yeah, you've captured this side, but what are you going to do about that rest of it? As soon as LFL gets the dander up, they're going to charge across here and wipe you out. I know Ark. That's how he's going to do it. And by the way, you still gave 6 Texas their back now. Six Texas has a perfect angle. There's nothing restraining them. Now, if the CSA doesn't charge us out here, the SB may be able to reform and hit them. So, you know, I think the CSA is being a little bit too hesitant here to finish them off here. In fact, Six Texas right now should just charge these guys, in my opinion. They would have no problem wiping them out. 
Now, if they're being a skirmish group, maybe they can't do it, but. I mean, I would still, if I was six Texas, you know, come like right here and just shoot him. Just come right here and boom, boom, boom. If you can't charge him. Yep, they took way too long. CSA, big mistake. Because now here comes Venom. They gave him enough time. And you pulled LFL off of the defensive position to deal with a cannon. Complete waste of a huge unit like LFL for a mission like that. Way out of position. Should have sent a small unit to deal with that. Maybe GC. And because of those errors by the CSA, the Union was able to overcome it, and they are now able to take point here. I'd say it was good, but frankly it wasn't by either team. I'm, I'm, these were not good maneuvers by either team. Um, so now six Texas is over here. Where were you a couple minutes ago? <laughs> in fact, I would say the CSA needs to just pull off of this right now. There's no point staying here, and I think Hog is making the right decision of getting out of there. You need to reset now for the attack. So now we're at 23 minutes of taking losses here. Right now, I think it's a mistake for the CSA to engage at this distance when they're down so many men and the Union's so concentrated. They are going to very easily get overwhelmed here if they're not careful here. And in fact, that's happened multiple times to 8th Florida today that I've seen. They, they get a little bit too far out, and they get melted like this. Let's close. No, Let's go. Yeah. I think this position back here by GC and 6 Texas is a little bit more defensible. Um, a little bit of a decline here. And you got to, you know, the unit's got to extend itself out a little bit more. To hit it. Sixty York on the right side of the wall. Sixty York on the right side of the wall. Fourth on the road. Fourth, George on my right. Single rank, six. Single rank. Double rank. Form up. Form up. Double ranks on me and Pan Dragon's right. Independent fire. Shoot down that wall, boys. Awesome. Fourth, check. In the direction of Richmond. Check. Take him. Huh? Pilot, stop getting shot. Back. This is going well, Six. Double ranks, double ranks. Fourth, this, 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 double ranks. Fourth, Look at that tickets, we're winning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Check, yeah. Check in. Now, if we look at, you know, the big, you know, kind of the mile-high view here, most of the unions concentrated there on point. You do have the already crew out here with the cannon. Now, the nice thing for the CSA, I would say right now, is they can choose their options. They can, you know, envelop either from one side or the other side or from both. I would not... And a shot in there, I missed. Yeah, that was close. Uh, it doesn't look like it hit. Um, in fact, it looks like there's a bit of a rotation out to this side here by the LFL that can kind of squeeze the Union out of this position because I think they're a little bit over concentrated right now. It's good to be mutually supporting, but right now I say the CSA needs to kind of just poke at the wings and kind of get them to. Uh, spread themselves out again. You don't want them stuck in the center piece here. That's going to be a card to uh, knock off. Oh, 
Now, this Union is a little bit ahead on tickets here. Um, well, the biggest problem I would say for them right now, though, is time. The CSA has plenty of it. Let's see, LFL is going to move back out here. So, again, if Six Texas, I would say, yeah, I like this decision by Six Texas. You see how they've dragged out a unit over here in NYV, although I do like how Pilot has not. No, you're looking pretty, though. I would still put in a better position than this. I think he's a little bit overexposed. Um, but it is good that he's rotated out to deal with this unit without going all the way over there this time so he can support the center a little bit better. I just don't like how he's out, out in the middle here. Nice work, boys. Nice work, six. Here they come. Down the road. I'm watching. I would say the key for the CSA right now is concentration. You want to concentrate your fire on one unit. So like right now I would say, you know, put all your fire into the SB. This Colonel Vibar rotated out here a little bit. For you, Fuji. the fire. Keep the fire. They usually the 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 Hell yeah, bro. Have Well, you know, the old saying is you don't have to be, uh, you know, good. You just need to be better than the other guy. These guys aren't bad. I just think those charges were not very good. And I think uh, some bad uh, decisions there by some of the individual commanders kind of created some cascading problems. But um, right now, I'd say the Union's in a very decent spot here. You know, kind of shelling up here, doing mutual support. And I think they're in a decent spot here. We'll see if they can hold it here. Now, one thing I would do is, I think, I think, uh, Leo has figured it out. He's going to take this cannon and turn it on him. They're down the road. They're down the road. They're coming up the road, boy. They're coming up the road. Double ranks on the road. On my left. Double ranks on the road, fourth. Demons are coming. Defend the cannon. And Come on, the the Give them the beans! Give them the beans, boys, and the can. Well, I'd straight into him the right there in front of us. Fourth Georgia. Trail, four taps. Oh, to the left. To the right. To the right, boys. To the right. Yeah, yeah. Come on, right. Off on the wall! Uh, okay. Veterans! Uh. Are they moving a the cannon up? Oh, yeah. Uh, Alright, don't move the board! Good awareness by the CSA to get out of that cannon shot, or at least the easy cannon shot. Honestly, right now, I think the CSA really needs to ex choose a side and try to exploit it. Because right now, I think doing this long distance shooting is not working here. They're about even on tickets, which, you know, they got enough time here, but it's it's... I think they'd have more success uh, being a little bit more aggressive in the in the movements and the attacks here. The Union, I would say, is a little bit well, far I'm out here. Oh, Here's Hog trying to come up, see what he could do. Company about place, fall back five steps. Not a bad volley. Lost a decent amount doing it, but not bad. Now that's... I don't know why you would keep independent fire there. Oh, 
Same problem. Too far out. They concentrate fire on you. And on my right, make a line on my right and kneel. Alright, that there you go. Okay, come back. Get down. There you go, Monio. There you go. Now he's he's getting them to somewhat more intelligible. A little short on that already shot. Yeah, Seems he's starting to catch up a little bit on tickets, though. Ah, it's almost as if, you know, something has changed in the game where now, you know, you can't just shoot somebody out. You have to, unless you really concentrate on them. And the only way to take a position is to do a mass charge. What could that have been? I don't know, Kotel. You're a fucking idiot. I will say, though, I, I think the two rank thing has actually worked uh, pretty well. I haven't seen any real issues with it from the units. Um, and it doesn't really seem to uh, slow down the pace of the battle at all. A... So six Texas rotated all the way out here. Again, this is fine if you you kind of restraining the six New York. That's not a bad idea, but it's it's not really. It's kind it's kind of you're making a uh, a one for one. You're not really making a huge difference, to be honest with you. So we got a wider flank here, I believe, by LFL. I'm curious to see how deep Ark is planning on going. Because you can get quite far back here, and really, and you know, there's some decent defilades here you can get into. Try to get back behind the Union line here. See if, the, oh, it looks like the Union saw it here, and O'Keefe is going to maneuver to try to stop it. Hey! So it looks like LFL saw that maneuver and they're gonna scamper back. So that one was a little bit too long on the fuse. Again, if they, if they're maxing out the men, maxing out the men. Jesus, you know, if they're, they're setting it to the the, the most uh, the lowest fuse time that they can. You know, that's what they could do. But. CSA hit breaking with that. This might work a little bit better because right now 52nd is distracted and they've got some support from GC. So this uh, this attack I like a little bit more. See, it's mutually supporting here. And they're facing a little bit less than they were before. So I like this attack a little bit better. And a little bit high on the fuse time, but again, that's very close. They might not have had an option. LFL coming up as well. So yeah, I like this advance a lot more than some of the previous ones I saw. But by the same token, the Union defense, I'd say, is a little bit better as well. I would say right now the objective for the CSA needs to be not... See, I would say that's a bad target selection. The SB is your biggest threat here. This is what you need to knock off. You can knock off Venom and his guys, which you can do if you concentrate fire on him. Then you'll be in a very good position. 
It's going to be very hard for 52nd with their manpower when Fort Georgia was where they're positioned to stop a forward movement to capture the point. So yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're targeting 52nd. Yeah, they knocked them off. Yeah. Again, this is the key piece right here. This right here is what you need to knock out. SB is going to fall back a little bit. Yep, good discipline by the CSA, just moving up a little bit. Just what they need. The rest of the CSA should be moving up to support them right now, though. Let's see, are they doing it? Union is on breaking now. Yep, here comes Hog. There's six Texas moving in when they're supposed to. Good job. And there's GC. Great job. Now here comes the Union charge. Ah, problem. It's it's too it's too disconcerted. SB went in, but they're the only ones that went in. Now the next charge goes in. Too late. Fort Georgia, day late, dollar short. I'm, I hate to say it. And now here comes the other charge by 8th floor. Why is, it, why is it too late, Kotel? It's too late because you need to maximize it so you're hitting them all at once. You need to give multiple dilemmas where they're going to defeat you in detail. As you can see, as LFL did. If LFL was dealing with another charge at the same time, they wouldn't have been able to do this counter charge. But because SB was wiped out easily, you can see the only ones that went in. It's an easy CSA victory. And that was a very, very good attack. I gave some criticism earlier for their defense, but that was an excellent attack there by the CSA team. I don't like that. I didn't like the target selection of the 52nd, but that's a very small thing compared to being able to uh, do that full attack. So, and here comes the last of the Union, but it's it's it'll just be wiped out here. Yep, that's it. I know that. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. A uh, very static battle, to be honest with you. Not too much to really talk about. Um, you can see how deadly these volleys, though, in two ranks can be. And I really think um, whichever team figures out concentrating fire first and target selection first will have a huge advantage over the other team. Um, it's really not just about, hey, I kill whoever. No, it's, it's, it's with the five-second rule... You really need to be very specific about what units you're attacking. And in my opinion, you know, figuring out who's your biggest threat and taking them off the battlefield with concentrated fire. And um, when they did that, I think they were more successful. Uh, but it's not an easy thing to do. You know, you see a target, you want to shoot it. No, 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 no. You need to figure out who's your biggest, what is your, you know, target you need to hit. You need to have some discipline in that target selection. Anyway, that's it for now. Um... Yeah, I'll do another one. Why not?